Hey guys, it's M4J here and welcome back to Wild Realms here on Planet Zoo. Let me just move my microphone into the right place. Welcome back to Wild Realms and welcome to Asia. This is the newest section of the park. It's the second section of the park after Africa. And as you might have noticed uh, from the last couple of streams, Asia is a bit more hilly than Africa. Um, no real reason other than the topography of the park at the front was a bit flatter and over here it was a bit hillier. And I thought, you know what, if there's one thing Asia is known for, it's huge mountain ranges. And I know it's known for other things too, don't get me wrong, but you've got the Himalayas, uh, you've got other mountain ranges that I can't remember the names of right now. Tallest mountain in the world, Everest, is in the, uh, the Himalayas in Asia, in Nepal. Uh, funny enough. So I thought why not make this really mountainous hilly region of the park uh, themed to Asia with all the um, You know things like red pandas tigers Great pa uh, giant pandas great pandas. I mean they are great pandas, but they're giant pandas uh, Trying to think of other Asian animals as well. I Didn't plan much for this episode uh, Basically, this is pre-recorded because I'm out on Wednesday when this goes out um, and kind of gave myself loads of time to record the footage didn't give myself a huge uh, amount of time to record the audio so I'm just going to talk really about what's going to be happening on screen the title of the episode kind of gives away what we're adding in today we are starting off with the giant pandas and then after that we will be adding not Bengal tigers but Siberian tigers the lesser known of the tiger family I would say compared to the Bengal tigers at least uh, I think Siberian tigers more often than not if you go to a zoo and you see tigers uh, I'm trying to think of zoos that I've been to recently I think more often than not these days they are Siberian tigers and not Bengal tigers uh, I'm trying to think off the top of my head I believe Paradise Park which I used to go to a lot as a kid they've just had a red panda uh, cub be born which is very very exciting but I believe they have Siberian Tigers. Um, yeah, it's all over their homepage. I'm just trying to look to see what animals they've actually got. Cats. I imagine that's what it would come under. I believe they are Siberian. It just says Tigers. That's not very helpful, is it? Oh, they're Amur Tigers. Ah, never mind. Uh, we don't have those in the game, I don't think. Not yet, anyway. But yeah, they have Amur Tigers, Snow Leopards, White Lions, Jaguar. This is currently away because they're building a new Jaguar enclosure. Uh, and I think they used to have Ocelots as well, but they don't seem to anymore. We are going to have most of that list. We've already got the, uh, the Lions over in Africa. We are going to have Bengal Tigers as well as Siberian Tigers, but today I wanted to focus more on the Siberian Tiger. Uh, purely because, again, you think tiger, you think Bengal tiger. And I just wanted to, to go with the um, the less popular choice, as it were. Uh, and then also, little bits and pieces here and there. Uh, little bits of... A lot of it I do off camera, to be fair. But I kind of go back to... So the, the railway station in Asia. All of the zookeeper huts and things like that. Right now, it's all part of one continuous work zone that covers the entirety of Asia. But if you actually see the vast distance that uh, zookeepers and, and mechanics have to walk um, and vets, it's it's not gonna work. So I'm gonna have to uh, come up with a new system for that. Um, but that kind of gives me a good opportunity anyway to, to kind of rebuild little areas of the zoo. One thing I've promised myself is no matter what I do here in Asia, I am not gonna go back and redo them, uh, the building style over in Africa. The idea is this zoo was built at different periods of time. So the very first area of the zoo was the Elephant House, um, where the Gemsbok are and the majority of the African Plains. And that's why, oh, and the Cheetahs. And that's why that bit is sort of very run down looking. It's in need of some tender loving care, basically. Um, this area, Asia, is going to be one of the newer areas, which is why it's all you know, more densely themed and the, the habitats look a lot nicer. Uh, there's no other way of putting it, I'm afraid. They look a lot more habitable. And that's why, like, this area looks completely different. Not just the theming, but obviously the, the style of habitat as well. I'm going for as much barrierlessness as I can here in Asia. Uh, so already you'll see the red pandas do have a barrier around them. Um, 
their enclosure is way way too big for what they need it for i might even split that enclosure in two have the red pandas on one side and something else uh, trying to think of something else small that i could put on the other side i'm sure there's something i could find um, and split that in half either that or just make their enclosure smaller in general and have the other side be for gardens or something i don't know make that area look a little bit nicer anyway or just go ham and say do you know what two red pandas maybe up to five in the enclosure let's just give them a massive area to roam around in that'd be good most um red panda enclosures are literally a tree with a fence around it and that's all they need they're pretty happy and i actually made this comment me and my partner went to a, a wildlife park recently that had a red panda uh, two red pandas and again it was literally a tree with a wall around it and i made some comment like they have no reason to escape they're perfectly happy and then i came home and read that uh, a red panda had escaped from adelaide zoo that day um or two days prior it took them two days to find it and at that point i was like okay maybe some of them have a reason to escape but for the most part they're pretty happy just sitting in a tree all day a bit like a koala which we will also have at one point uh in wild realms here um so yeah to go off on that complete tangent barrierless habitats now i don't mean you know you can reach out and touch the panda because that's not going to end well what i mean by that is um i'm trying to remember the name of the 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 um the thing i can't even remember that word now basically it's it's a natural barrier so there'll be a, a sheer, sheer drop from the pathway down into the enclosure and then there will be a fence to stop people from climbing over, obviously, although the game doesn't simulate that, still for realism's sake. And then there will be the animals kind of in a pit below, but with the pandas and the tigers, the land actually slopes up so that at, at various points in the enclosure, the animal is the same height as you are. Uh, and the tigers, especially, we've got a viewing gallery at the bottom, surrounded by glass. And then we also have a, uh, a viewing gallery at the top, which works the same way as I've just described, a fence with a sheer drop. Um, I really like how these two have turned out. It's probably not that great in the grand scheme of things, and I'm sure there are more talented uh, builders out there who would do a better job. But for my first attempt at something like this, I'm very, very happy with how it's turned out. The panda habitat looks good. I actually prefer it to the tigers. But I think the tiger one is the one that everyone's going to be like, oh yeah, good job. That's, that's you know, you've done well with that one. Both of them, uh, this is the panda one that I'm building now. Both of them, I was absolutely terrified that I was going to put the animal into the uh, enclosure and it would immediately escape. So I was very, very relieved when that didn't happen. I also had a little moment, I might go back and redo this, where for some reason with the tigers, the Siberian tigers, I was on the habitat tab. And I filtered it by Siberian Tiger. And despite the tiger having no water needs whatsoever, I was getting things like underwater feeder. Now this might be just because tigers, as we all know, like water. They like swimming. I think most species, if not all species of tiger, do actually enjoy swimming. Um, so I might go back and add a pool for them. Something else I completely forgot about when I was designing these enclosures is the fact that they both had climbing requirements. So tigers, they always have a climbing frame in the middle. You always see them lying on the top, being lazy little buggers. Uh, and pandas, they climb bamboo trees. That's, that's basically what they do. If you ever go on YouTube and type in funny panda videos, 9 out of 10 of those clips are going to be pandas falling out of trees. So, yeah, completely forgot that um, we needed climbing requirements. Thankfully, I was able to incorporate them in. Uh, the tiger one, it was a little touch and go as to whether or not the tiger would actually be able to get on the climbing frame and then jump out of the enclosure, but thankfully that's not the case. And one other thing I would like to say with this is I love the way buildings and rocks can work as habitat barriers. So I'm using the null barriers here, and I was worried that if I did this and then, like for both of these habitats, I've used it for the entire enclosure, and I was worried that that wouldn't be enough but this wall here for example stops the pandas from escaping the rocks that you'll see me put down in a bit they stop the pandas from escaping same thing with the tigers i've literally got a viewing gallery just with glass walls and that is all that separates you from the tigers no attempted escapes it's either the tigers don't care and haven't tried to escape or they just can't i'm hoping it's the latter because that would be more satisfying but you never know uh so yes this is the panda temple um, which I'm tempted to build a restaurant attached to this building and call it 
Panda Temple or something like that. I was originally going to call it Panda Express. Uh, we know that name's taken. Uh, I asked my partner for some, some uh, suggestions as well and she had a couple of good ones. I think Panda Temple might have been one of them. In fact, that might be where I got it from. But I, uh, I did some Googling and I found a lovely picture on Google Images of a, a rundown um, Chinese temple. And that was the inspiration for this building. It's it doesn't look anything like the building that I got images of, but it's in inspired by that building. Uh, and you'll see very quickly how it looks nothing like an actual Chinese temple. I decided to build it as ruins. I was trying to get like a staircase effect as well, but it wasn't really working how I expected. Also, most of the walls you'll see me place here do eventually get removed. Um, they're just there as, as a placeholder while I try and work out what to do with the actual aesthetics of the building. Once I get that sussed, which doesn't take too long thankfully, um, I go back and, and take out the wall pieces that I'm not using and I'm very very happy with the outcome. The barriers are perfectly where they need to be and for the, uh, for the rest of it it's all ruins. Um, I will go back again in future and, and do another pass and make it look a little bit nicer. I'll always go back and tinker with things here and there, but for the most part, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. These are the two entryways in and out of the building. This building I'm actually building here, it's nothing to do with shelter for the pandas. It does actually work as shelter, but I just wanted something. I see a lot of uh, people's builds on Facebook and Reddit, for pandas especially, and they always have some kind of temple building or some kind of pagoda or something that really makes you think of where a panda would actually live. You know, middle of Asia, um, very aesthetically pleasing, and I wanted to, to kind of recreate that myself, but in my own way. So this building is a ruined temple, as I said, <clears throat> and it's just an area where the zookeepers can get in and out of the enclosure without sort of ruining the immersion of the theme that we're going for here. So there is the gate on the front. Eventually, I think I'll move the gate round to the side. Uh, just to make it a little less in your face and then of course we'll put the um, the panda temple building the restaurant I was also tempted to uh, put a staff room and a zookeeper hut all in the same complex so that from the the front it just looks like a restaurant uh, and we might even have tables and chairs on this ruined temple like the upper floor here that looked down into the, uh, the panda enclosure. I have got some enrichment items that you'll see me add inside this temple just to get the pandas in here as well. Um, and then yeah, have a staff room and have a zookeeper hut just so our staff don't have to walk up and down constantly. You might have seen the staircase. In fact, have I built the staircase yet? Yeah, that might come after. Uh, there's a staircase that goes between this level and the, uh, the lower level that then passes over the railway to then go down again to the lowest level which is where the station is and the red pandas are. Um, and that is, it's quite a drop from this level downwards. And the tigers are on a lower level than here as well. Um, and I think I need to build some more like localized uh, staff rooms and just things to, to <laughs> so that my staff aren't like knackering themselves, walking six miles every hour just to get to and from the staff room and the, uh, the zookeeper hut. Um, right. So yeah, temple, ruined temple. We've got some support pillars here on the bit where the, the tower is still standing and everything like that. Then I wanted to put some ruined bits down. And the reason I want to have a viewing area looking over this area is because I've put all this like theming down, but you can't actually see it from anywhere. The zookeepers can see it when they walk in to, um, to feed the, uh, the, the pandas and do the enrichment and all that good stuff. But um, besides that... Um, no one else can see it so my yeah I need to put a viewing gallery in here somewhere I'll find a way I will find a way uh, we'll come back to it. if you've got any suggestions by the way feel free to suggest them in the comments down below always open to ideas um, I think though for the most part for a first attempt I'm really happy with this I there's there's a lot of things I would change like I would I wish I gave myself more room um, and I think the the foliage could do with a little bit of tweaking here and there. But for the most part, I am pretty happy. Oh, the rock work as well. I'm very lazy with my rock placement because I'm trying to, to get the animals in as quick as possible at this point. 
and it's just a case of sw switch on random rotation and just keep placing rocks over and over and over again until there's no more rocks to place and it's always the same type of rock and like here I'm sinking it into the ground a little bit and doing some random rotation again and, and little bits and pieces like that but for the most part it's basically the same rock over and over again and it is noticeable after a while but yeah again we can just come back and, and swap these out at some point in the future the foliage is something I'm, I'm happier with uh, Africa again most of the sort of the desert animals savanna animals in Africa they don't need much foliage maybe some bushes on the ground but that's about it the one I'm really disappointed with is the lions I feel like I should have put more foliage down with the lions um, but again it's a teeny tiny complaint overall I feel um, and maybe the variety of foliage as well I could have done something with I did find myself playing placing the same type of tree over and over again might be different sizes but overall the same type of tree uh, this is the fence going in and again I might be willing to swap this out in future for something maybe community made just to make it look a little bit nicer I think this works though I think it kind of goes with the with the aesthetic as well it's a very stone inspired build this one um, and for the most part that's what we've replicated here stone fences um, stone barriers here there and everywhere I think it works again it's a bit gray a bit drab I don't know if I can repaint these if I can maybe I will or maybe I'll just add some panels to them or something just to add a little bit of color but at the end of the day no one's coming to this part of the zoo to see the fence now are they they're coming to see the pandas uh, which is something else I was going to talk about is maybe it's just taking a while for people to like realize there's pandas at the back of the park we do have guest services right at the front and I believe I've still got information stores there that sell maps but um, no one seems to be coming up here and it could just be the walking distance is too great and I'll have to add some benches and stuff like that I'm also tempted to add some kind of transport from the bottom of the, the hill here to the top um, I don't think I'll have it pass over or through any exhibits or habitat sorry I think I'll do that separately but yeah I think I need to do something because no one's coming up here right now they can see the tigers from the train you'll see that a little bit later on but um, they're not really doing much to come and see the pandas they're not really doing much to see the red pandas either now I do know that, that guests in this game do use transport rides to get to certain areas of the park. There's a little guest thought that I saw yesterday when I was recording the last bit of this, which was um, I can I can see some really cool things if I go on Expedition Express, which I mean that means that's working, which I'm very happy about. It is little touches like that. I don't know if Planet Coaster has the same setup or not. I don't know whether people use transport rides to get to certain parts of the park or not. If they do, that's awesome. Even if they don't, it's still okay because they'll still get on the, the rides and, and, you know, travel around and stuff. But if anyone knows, let me know. That would be uh, useful to know about, actually. Right, uh, little other aesthetic things here. I kind of wanted to, to build this, like, terraced, um, this um, enclosure. So you see that everything at the top... There's a lot of bamboo. There's a bamboo screen as well that the pandas, there it is, that the pandas can go and hide behind if they need to. For the most part, I don't think they do. I think it actually says they're pretty okay with human interaction. Obviously, again, no one's going in the enclosure with them other than zookeepers. But yeah, I think it said they're okay with interaction, but I've still given them some hidey areas so that they can sort of nestle away if they wish. Um, and there's a lot of bamboo because obviously it's pandas. There's a few other trees here and there and yeah just try to to not have it so that you can see the entire enclosure from a single location i've tried to, to mess around with the sight lines a little bit um, and see what what i could come up with but the point i was going to make was we have like shelves so this is a shelf that i'm building here that runs in front of the climbing frame the climbing frame itself is a shelf of course the ground level at the bottom where that big feeder is which i don't know if pandas can actually use but it was on the list so i added it anyway but that's also a shelf and then we've got the top level behind the bamboo uh, bamboo lines that's the, the the top shelf as it were and that's also the cave access and I have tested the animals can access every part of the enclosure that I wanted them to be able to access which is awesome happy about that here's some more random rock placement I need to go through and put some um, some foliage sticking out of the rocks as well I think just to um, 
add a little bit extra to this. Um, but for the most part, this is what the um, the panda enclosure is going to look like, and I'm, I'm quite happy about it, to be honest. Here's me finishing off that staircase that I was talking about just now. So you see it connects up like so. Um, and yeah, I think all good. Very happy. Save the game here. I think this was at the towards the end. I think I'm just about to go and get some pandas. You'll also see me muck up with the pandas a little bit. I, I basically got the wrong ones or I was trying to refresh the list so I kept acquiring pandas and then couldn't do anything with them. So we end up with four pandas in the enclosure to begin with. I have since gone down and um, reduced it back to two. They are a breeding pair so hopefully we will get some little panda cubs running around but for the most part it'll just be the two of them. Um, and I know in real life pandas are very difficult to uh, to get to mate with one another So maybe that's reflected in the game. Who knows? But yeah, we have our four pandas moving in and There they go first ones in second ones in I think I had to do some uh, adjustment with the obviously the, with the terrain painting But I think I had to add some more foliage as well just to make them extra happy but This is our little panda enclosure and I kind of I want it to be where if you have a map you obviously know where the pandas are but I also want it to be you're walking along and then you'll suddenly be like, what's in this one? Oh my god, that's a panda kind of thing, you know? I think it'll work. I'm trying to be very subtle with some of these enclosure designs now because I think with the, especially with the elephants, you know, we had that massive elephant head and the big bridge that goes over to it and the meerkats are over there as well, of course, and the um, anteaters. I know you said armadillos then, but they're not. They're anteaters. Are they anteaters? Maybe tapirs. I can't remember what I've got over there now. Um, aardvarks, that's it. Meerkats and aardvarks, I remember now. Uh, yeah, so I didn't want it to be as, as quite in your face as in Africa. Uh, and again, it's because these were built at different times in the zoo's history. I would also say that the European area, once we get around to, to building that, that will also be one of the original areas of the zoo, as it were. And I say that in inverted commas. Um, so again, some of the enclosures will be a bit ropey looking. Um, more focus on barriers and, and stuff like that. Some of it will be newer. You can imagine that over time they start replacing things and upgrading them. But I do want the zoo to tell a story as well. And you'll be able to see its history and development over the uh, the years. So Asia is one of the newer areas. Uh, a lot more sort of thought out. Kind of with the Chester Zoo uh, vibe of, you know, we don't want these big, huge, ugly barriers separating you from the animals. We want you to be able to actually see the animal and the animal to be able to see you. Whereas some of it will be a bit London Zoo-like, where, you know, space is limited and we need, like, big chain link fences everywhere to stop you getting mauled by a bear. Um, there's no other way of saying it, <laughs> I don't think. I should have added some more colour here. You can see I'm adding some bushes with flowers. But it's only when I was doing the tigers that I realised there's like pink blossom trees and there's some yellow or orangey coloured trees as well. And I really should have used those in certain areas for the pandas too. So again, I might go back and swap some things out. Got some yellow flowers here as well, which look quite nice. And it's just final details at this point. And then we'll move on to the tiger enclosure, which is a lot of fun. I had to build a whole new area of the zoo. For the tigers this section was always going to be uh, i always wanted the pandas to be quite high up because if you again see videos of pandas they do tend to live up relatively high not like the peak of everest or anything like that because first of all they don't live in china um uh, sorry everest isn't in china that's what i meant to say uh but they they are quite high up on mountains it's a bit like when you see gorillas in the wild in africa they do actually live on the sides of mountains more often than not uh, and again, that's something I wanted to, to try and represent here. Now, this area that I'm flattening out here, this is actually the upper viewing gallery for our Siberian tigers. The tigers themselves, you might have seen the railway at the bottom there. There's like a little D shape, semicircle shape. That is where the tigers will go. Um, again, it looks quite small, but I think the enclosure itself is about four times bigger than it actually needs to be for the two tigers that we're going to have. Um, I've tried to pay more attention now to the the top number for how many can go in an enclosure because in the past I've looked at the number of males and the number of females and added those together. That's not actually what that's trying to tell you. That's just saying if you've got a group of five, you can have up to three males and then the other two be females, that kind of thing. So 
Some of my other habitats might have to have some uh, some evictees, but I'm okay with that. As long as they go to a ha healthy, happy home, that's all I'm interested in. But yeah, this area here becomes the home of the Siberian tigers. And we have a lovely little uh, underpass, a little pathway that goes under the railway that goes into the lower viewing gallery. And then the upper viewing gallery there looks awesome. There's also going to be a cave dug into the... Um, dug into the uh, side of the hill where the tigers go to sleep. Uh, I think I've got three beds in there and that's just in case they do breed. Um, we have, you know, accommodation for them. Might have even put four in there actually, just so we've got double accommodation. I don't know how many cubs a tiger has per litter, whether it's one or whether it's more. I don't know. But yeah, this little pathway here, uh, it took me ages to work out how to actually work the barrier into this because I was going to do a big glass thing. Because originally I was just going to have a you stand under the railway and there'll be a big glass wall and then that looks into the tigers but eventually you'll see that that doesn't really work out very well barrier looks awful so i go and rebuild it uh, and make it look nicer there we go this stupid 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 thing uh yeah we fix it we fix it we make it look nice and i do love the fact when you see the people on the train they actually point out across to where the tigers are and they even make little comments like i get a really good view of the tigers from here and that's perfect because i didn't know that's how transport rides worked in the game uh, and that's a really nice added extra for me which i'm very very happy about uh so this is the main path that goes into asia from africa and connecting the path up here i don't do a very good job with it so i just make it a 90 degree right hander in the end or left hander depending on which direction you're coming from of course down here we have a nice grid shape um we do eventually i use the staff gate as the basis to build the grid here in the end uh, and it is perfectly flat i was going to try and make it on a slight slope but it was better off just making it flat and we have our siberian tiger enclosure starting to take shape the uh, the barrier here again this one was harder to do because of the railway at the bottom so the panda uh, enclosure the, there's a hill as the back wall so I do all the front stuff with the path and then the back wall is always just a slope that the pandas can't climb whereas this one um, there's a railway and there's also now a tunnel here as well so I really didn't want the tigers to be able to escape from this one uh, and because we've there's also some areas around the side here where they could potentially climb up if they so wanted made it a bit more challenging uh, technically the barrier does cross the path there eventually I'll, I rework it slightly so it doesn't cross as much uh, but since the cave goes under the pathway you do have to have the barrier there otherwise every time the tiger goes in the cave it'll come up saying animals escaped even though it hasn't so yeah it's, it's little nuances like that it's not something I've yet experienced with an animal in an exhibit but I do remember one of my penguins in fact that was on stream one of my penguins just walked up the rocks and escaped because I didn't realize they could do that and I found them sitting on the roof of the building just chilling they weren't actually like running away or anything but they were just chilling on top of the roof of the uh the hippo section which I was just kind of like how the hell did you guys get up there I'm trying to put the gate in here as well I thought this was a nice natural slope so this would be perfect for the gate but you could see that the gate gate doesn't really work that well with terrain and I was going to build a shelf for it to sit on and it just really wasn't working so I abandoned that idea and decided let's put the gate at the bottom instead so then I had to reroute this barrier here because obviously you can't have actually I think you can have a gate inside an enclosure I did that with the lemurs um, but I wanted the barrier to be the border of the enclosure and I wanted the, the gate to be part of that barrier so again you'll see me rebuild here and then the gate goes in and then that gets redone to try and make it straighter and then i like i said i used the gate as the um the datum for the path grid down at the bottom here now so that when i build the building the path stays inside the building which it does i'm pleased to say it's a little bit touch and go on the edges um i think part of it does clip through the part of the wall does clip through the path but for the most part it's pretty accurate um, which I'm very very happy about and then yeah we've got the uh, the walls going in so this is again it's a bit stony but it does get replaced by glass most of it gets replaced by glass momentarily got this nice little walkway entrance as well that goes underneath the railway kind of got like Disney vibes from that bit um, putting in the um, 
putting in the, the, the walkway under the railway. I'm trying to think like the queue of the Haunted Mansion passes underneath uh, the railway at all three parks, I want to say. Disneyland Paris, Disneyland California, and Disney uh, Magic Kingdom and Disney World. Um, yeah, I think all three, the show building is actually on the opposite side of the railway. Um, but the one I was thinking of really was the entrance where you walk under the railway. That's what, that's the one that sprung to mind for me immediately. Here go the glass panels then. I actually end up making this a double story uh, building. So I just thought it would look nicer. And it does. I think it works really, really well. Uh, and it also means that you can actually, from the train, uh, as you pass by the building, you can actually look through the, the upper windows uh, and look straight down through into the Tigers as well, which is a nice touch. Uh, again, you can imagine that the, the designers spent hours poring over the blueprints to try and make that work. So we're, we're coming up to the, the crux of the construction here of the Tiger exhibit. Uh, again, I keep saying exhibit. I don't like the fact that exhibit means something different in this game because in a zoo, an exhibit is anything in which an animal could be contained. But I'm going to have to try and say enclosure more because habitat, you know, an exhibit in this game can also be considered a habitat if you want to be pedantic about it. Um, and you know me, I love being pedantic about things. But yeah, this is the crux of the Siberian tiger habitat. The cave is now going in, so I now move this barrier so that it is uh, covering the cave as well. Again, the tigers, I think to my knowledge, have gone inside the cave and there's been no mention of animals escaping, so I believe it's worked. Digging out something like this, particularly with a pathway over the top, you can see there the barrier as well. Um, it's a bit of a pain. I believe you can, in fact, there is a setting where you can lower and raise terrain around barriers, but I like having that off because um, it, it actually reminds me that, you know, there are things that potentially are in the way and you need to swap things over or move things left and right, wherever it might be, so that you can actually terraform without uh, breaking anything, which is always the way to go. So, yes, um, building the barrier around the cave. The caves themselves... This one has a little bit more to it. I put some rocks in and, and stuff like that. The panda one right now is fairly boring, but only because it's right at the back. So you're not really going to see it that clearly from the front viewing area anyway. Maybe once the restaurant is in, depending on how far that viewing gallery comes over, I might need to put some rocks in just to hide it a little bit more. But the tiger one, you stand right above it as well. So I wanted to put something there that kind of makes it a little, uh, a little better themed. I think that's probably the best way of saying it um, so that it doesn't just look like a hole in the ground but it actually looks like a, a deliberately designed cave this is only for the entrance of the cave the back of the cave again I've just left blank for now I might put some walls in or something like that again the idea is you're not really supposed to see that bit and the Tigers don't care whether the wallpaper's in or not so for the most part I just left it as is uh, the rock work here then, a bit like the pandas, kind of just placed in the same rock like six times with different rotations each time. Did a little bit of careful placement where the walls are here so that when you're walking through the walkway there isn't a, a rock sticking through the wall. Um, but I've tried to make these rocks high enough so that the tigers can't escape, but low enough that you can still see over them from the train. And I haven't tested this with the peep camera yet, but just from looking at it at a raised level here, it does appear to work, which I'm very happy about. And then, of course, we place these big rocks here again to stop the tigers from climbing out. And then it gets to a point where they lower down again so that when you're standing on the viewing gallery at the top here, you can actually see in uh, and say hi to the tiggers. This um, this little section up at the top there, I might put something... Like, if I was to build a uh, an artificial pool, I haven't tested this. I know you can put barriers uh habitat barriers you can put water behind them i believe you can put water inside buildings i will want to test that though and i don't know about rocks but i'd like to put like an artificial pool maybe at the top there so the tigers can go for a dip kind of in privacy um although i think tiger swimming is kind of a crowd puller so maybe i'll have to put that somewhere else i'll, I'll figure out somewhere where I can put the pool. There is room to expand this enclosure to the left where you're looking now. So maybe that'll end up being where the pool goes. We might build it right next to the railway as well, just so when you're on the train you can see them swimming too. Also, just because right now we've only got one panda 
viewing area and we've only got uh, two tiger viewing areas that doesn't mean that's what we're limited to there may be other ones added in the future it's just right now like i said with the pandas i just wanted to get the animals in at this point um the panda enclosure took two hours to build this one took just shy of two hours to build so at this stage i just wanted to get it done and get the animals in and check that it all works and you know things like that uh this is me adding the second story to the viewing area here I think it just adds a little extra to it. I think it just makes it look a little nicer. You also saw the way I placed the flat roof under the railway. I was going to put a pitched roof in, but I thought it actually it might stick through into the tracks, and I didn't want that. So um, I could go back and use the one meter pitched roof just to add a little bit of texture to it. Um, there is also the fact that the terrain does actually stick through into that tunnel. So I might go back and... Um, take out the terrain under the track and build a, a, a man-made bridge and then incorporate that into the little building that I've put down. Something else I noticed here, I placed all these big rocks and then realized that if you're actually standing at the top there, you wouldn't be able to see anything. So I went back and replaced them with smaller rocks. And again, this really is just so that if you're standing in the lower viewing gallery, um, you're not just looking at, at turf. You know, there's actually something there that makes it look realistically like a rock face. Um, you can imagine that these are not natural rocks in these habitats. These are, in fact, all man-made. I think that makes it work better uh, overall. But we'll see. We'll see. Maybe it's, some of it's natural, some of it isn't. We've plugged the gaps, things like that. Something else I wanted to do at the top here was deliberately leave some gaps where there's some greenery. Uh, and in those areas, I plant some trees and some bushes and things like that. I'm not entirely sure how realistic the trees are. You've got to bear in mind that the roots of these trees have to go somewhere. And in some areas, I don't think I've left enough space for that. Um, so I might have to maybe replace the trees with smaller ones that look like they could actually go there. And also this, this like rock shelf that I've built here as well. Again, I think some of this I do actually go and remove later on, whether it was on camera or not, I can't remember. But it was just an excuse to... to Sort of practice rock placement really and some of it doesn't really look that great this one at the end here looks awful i think that's a candidate to be removed and replaced and then you see i, I removed some other ones there just to make some green spaces to plant some trees now the trees here i've tried to go for more random type trees it is feasible that bamboo would exist here as well because siberian tigers do i think just about overlap with pandas in terms of um uh, in terms of natural habitat but I kind of wanted to avoid using bamboo again if possible and just go for something different so we've gone for uh, these are still Asian trees for the is it taiga tiger however you say it t-a-i-g-a and temperate uh, biomes so these are all trees that you would find in Asia even though a lot of them I think you would also find in Europe uh, it seems weird like this is a european zoo of course it's meant to have been built in the uk ignore the massive mountain in the middle because that's not very uk ish you can almost you can almost imagine say they dug out the lake and they used the um the spoil from that plus also the spoil from um global ventures which in this world is built right next door of course imagine they just used all that spoil to build this massive mountain in the middle of the the zoo here uh, and it's technically a volcano, but I think I will fill in the top or I'll incorporate it into some kind of theming element. I don't know what yet. But yeah, imagine it's it's that's how it's happened. Um, that's why there's a mountain in the middle of a zoo in the UK. Uh, we're kind of using a lot of artistic license here, but it should be fine. Also talking about artistic license, the way I got that fence to fit through that tree there. You see me check it. I don't think it goes through quite as nicely as I uh, imagined, but still kind of impressed with myself on that one something else that i hadn't realized when i was building the pathway here but i did when i was building the fence was there's a gradual upslope here so the fence isn't to stop the animals escaping it's to stop people from climbing in um, but you see it gets lower and lower and lower as we go through here until eventually i'm like oh yeah that's way too low and i kind of angle it slightly and then i lift it up what i should have done was just lift it up and have it as a staircase effect because that would work much better so again, might have to go back and replace the fence in places just to make it look a little bit nicer and function a little bit better. But what can you do? Um, again, this is my first time building 
something like this. So experience is very limited right now. Um, as I get better, I might go back and improve some bits. But like I said, again with uh, Africa especially, the aesthetic of Africa is it's supposed to have been one of the first parts of the zoo to be built. So it's not going to be perfect. That's, that's the long and short of it, basically. There was something else I was going to mention. Oh, yeah. So I'm thinking about what to do for next week already. And one of the ideas I had was to put in the Prashevsky horse. I think that's how you pronounce it, which uh, can go in a, a habitat with the camels. I was thinking of doing that opposite the uh, like opposite the tigers here on the other side of the railway where it's flatter I was gonna make a like a Middle Eastern desert kind of area because I believe that's where uh, certainly where the camels come from and I believe that's where the horses um, habit as uh, inhabit as well so that's my plan for that uh, let me know what you think of that in the comments down below of course and I will try and make it not sand duny, but I will try and make it undulating at least. And I was going to make it a walkthrough, but as it turns out, guests can't go in with the Prashevsky horses. And I'm pretty certain, actually, thinking about it, they can't go in with the camels either. So I probably will have to um, abandon that idea uh, pretty quickly. Oh, yes, this is the tiger climbing frame that I was talking about. I was worried they'd be able to jump out. As it turns out, this actually works perfectly for what I... Uh, envisage this tiger enclosure looking like at the end of the day so i'm pretty happy with that the fact that the tiger there is at eye level with people on the upper gallery that's why i wanted to put that one in and i think that works really well then we've got the uh, the tree here the marking tree i think it's called or whatever it is which i think works quite well and i talked about shelves in the panda enclosure i mean this one has so many shelves there's too many to, to count i have checked again the tigers can get to all of the parts of the enclosure that i want them to same with the staff the tigers do look like they're sort of climbing up uh, a rock wall for the most part which i guess is what they would do in the wild as well so that works out quite well for me putting some color into this enclosure then you'll actually see i think it's on camera it might not be but after i bring the tigers in the uh the amount of coverage they require is insane so i just went ham with bushes on the ground and put them in really random locations so they are still part of the enclosure but they're not like blocking sight lines i put a lot at the rocks here under the railway uh just so that it fulfills the criteria basically but for the most part it doesn't block your view of the tigers they've got the cave if they want to go hide that's what it's for and there are some trees and things they can go hide behind as well if they so wish uh one thing i would like to see added to the game is animal characteristics so tigers like to be up high on these climbing frames and it would be good if they actually incorporated that into the game i know they have added more so that animals who climb they climb more now than they used to uh like the red pandas spend more time in trees and things like that maybe that is part of it for the tigers if they could add that too that would be great um, but yeah, we're pretty much coming to the end of the video now. There are huge gaps between these two enclosures. There are plans to fill those gaps. So no need to worry about that. That's me adding the tigers to the work zone. You can see the, the uh, distance now that they have to walk the staff between uh, the station here and the tigers. It is an obscene distance. But um, yeah, in time we'll add more buildings and we'll spread it out a little bit better and we'll make it look nicer. This does feel bigger. Asia does feel bigger than Africa, but I did zoom out at the end and it's roughly the same size. It's just things are more spread out here. Um, and I think that's what makes it look bigger than it actually is. This is us watching the first tiger get delivered, something I really wanted to see on camera. Uh, so we're following the staff member here up and over the, uh, the bit there that goes onto the bridge. They're then going to go down under the railway. I like watching the enclosures from this level as well. You can see whether or not they work. A train happened to go by as well. I should have got a screenshot of that actually. My uh, my missus told me to and I, I didn't in the end. Because I was more interested in making sure the tigers didn't escape. Also tigers hate grass, just so you know. They really hate long grass. They're not a huge fan of short grass. And it took me ages to paint this, uh, this habitat so that they were happy. Thankfully you've got it in I think like times six speed or something right now just so that it's uh, easier for you guys to watch. But yeah, that pretty much does it for this episode, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Sorry it wasn't a stream this week. Uh, there will be a, a, a stream in a couple of weeks' time as well that will be replaced with a video as well. More on that uh, as and when I know about it. I think it's the 7th of September, I think, is the day, but I'll keep you guys posted. But yeah, thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. And of course, if you're enjoying the series so far, drop some comments down below. Let me know what you think about these habitats. And also any ideas that you've got for future habitats, animals you'd like to see, all that good stuff. 
If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button. It really does help me out. If you have already subscribed to the channel, thank you guys for your continued support. Um, enjoy the rest of your weeks. Enjoy the rest of your evening as well, of course. And until next time, I will see you soon.